the 12th Sunday after Pentecost, we back here again in San Antonio. In the epistle for this 12th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from the second epistle of St. Peter, uh, St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 3. Brethren, such confidence we have through Christ towards God. Not that we are sufficient to think anything of ourselves as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also hath made us fit ministers of the New Testament, not in the letter, but in the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit, is the Spirit giveth life. Now, if the ministration of death, engraven with letters upon stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel uh, could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, which is made void, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather in glory? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more the ministration of justice aboundeth in glory. In the Gospel. Chapter 10. At that time Jesus said to his disciples, Blessed are the eyes that see the things which you see, for I say to you, that many prophets and kings have desired to see the things that you see and have not seen them, to hear the things that you hear and have not heard them. Master, what must I do to possess eternal life? But he said to him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? He answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, with thy whole soul, with thy whole strength, and with thy, all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said to him, Thou hast answered rightly, this too, and thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among robbers, who also stripped him, and having wounded him, went away, leaving him half dead. And it chanced that a certain priest went down the same way, and seeing him pass by. In like manner also a Levite, when he, when he was near the place, then saw him, passed by. But a certain Samaritan, being on his journey, came near him, and seeing him, was moved with compassion, and going up to him, bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him upon his own beast, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And the next day he took out two pence, and gave to the host, and said, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou shalt spend over and above, I at my return will repay thee. Which of these three, in thy opinion, was neighbor to him? Jesus said to him, Go, do thou in like manner. That's what the word of today is called. Today, this twelfth Sunday, after Pentecost, we're in the middle of the battle. There are always 24 Sundays after Pentecost, so that the 24th Sunday will be the day of the judgment. And on this 12th Sunday, we consider that we're in the middle of the battle. Some can grow tired in their journey. And that, uh, therefore, we see, what are we here for? What are we supposed to do when we're here upon this earth? And hence, we have the parable of the Good Samaritan. That our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ explained to us what we are supposed to do when we're on this planet earth. That we're here for a time. St. Augustine said that that our Lord Jesus Christ is a Samaritan, and the word Samaritan means stranger. Stranger. And the stranger, he's not from this land. The stranger, this is not his home. The stranger speaks with a different accent. And also the stranger is one who, when he visits our land, he's not planning to move here. He's a stranger. He's not going to become settled here. He's going to continue on back to his own home or to another home. And Christ is always a Samaritan. If you, go, if you come in your first day into a place, you may be a stranger. After a while, you become part of the family. After a while, you become part of the, of the culture. America is a country that the strangers came, settled down, and killed all the locals. We killed all the local Indians, and we put them on reservations, the one that survived, and we made this our home. But we're no longer strangers here. But with our Lord Jesus Christ, when he founded the Holy Roman Catholic Church, he founded a church which was in his own mystical body. And his body is a body that is not at home here on earth. His body comes down from heaven to this earth. And he is a stranger here. 
And we are going to be his followers will be considered strangers. And this is shown many ways in the sacred scripture and the Holy Gospel. For instance, our Lord said, He that wishes to be my disciple, let him take up his cross and follow me. That is, follow me because I'm on a journey. Follow me because I'm going from one place to another. Not to live, don't live where I live. Don't stay where I stay. Follow me because I'm moving. Follow me because I'm on a journey. And when they said to him multiple times, three apostles, St. Peter, James, and John said, on the top of the Mount, Mount of Transfiguration, Lord, it is good for us to be here. It's good for us to be here on top of this mountain. And he left the mountain. And when they said it's good for us to be here, a voice came from heaven. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. And the vision stopped. They were probably with three hours. We know there were three hours of Christ during the agony of the garden. They were probably three hours listening to Moses talk to Elias. And Elias talked to Christ. And for three hours they were enjoying the conversation of Christ himself with Moses and Elias. And after three hours they decided, you know what? It's good to be here. And the vision stopped. And the vision ended. It is not good to be here. What is good? What is good is to be with God. What is good is to follow him wherever he goes. And so therefore those apostles during three and a half years, they were with Christ. And what was during that entire time? He was always traveling. He was always on a journey. And he said, the sparrows, the foxes have their, their, their dens. The sparrows have a nest. But the Son of Man hath not a place where to lay his head. So Samaritan, journey, stranger, is essential to our church. Samaritan, journey, and stranger is essential to being a follower of Christ. That we are not, this is not our home, this is not our home. That is why we build the biggest cathedrals made out of the most solid stone. And the most sacred part of that cathedral is called the tabernacle, which means the tent. And it always has cloth on it. Because it's a tent. And a tent is a temporary dwelling place. The most magnificent cathedrals have in the front of them the presence of Christ. And Christ does not dwell in any permanent place here on earth. He dwells only in a tent and a tabernacle. He's always on the move here. He rests in heaven. He rests there, and if we're going to follow him, what does St. Paul say? He's the greatest follower of Jesus Christ. No one can follow Christ better than St. Paul. And St. Paul says, work while it's day, because the night is coming. Get busy. And St. Paul was angry with St. Bartholomew, because Bartholomew was about 70 years old, St. Paul was about 30 years old, and he couldn't keep up with him. And he had no excuse. I don't care if you're 70, get moving. <laughs> And so the St. Paul was the he that was he was not he was not impressed with St. Bartholomew. You're too slow, old man. Move. And St. Paul was always on the move. And St. Paul was always bringing Christ to the ends of the world. And he was on the move. Great journeys to bring Christ. Because Christ was deeply inside of him. And we must understand that the Samaritan is essence of our holy church, the essence of being a follower of Christ. And St. Augustine points out. Remember when our Lord, on, when he was speaking to the apostles, or rather to the Jews, and they were upset with him, the day that he said, I am who I am, the day that he said, I am God, and they picked up stones to throw at him only a few weeks before the crucifixion. And on that day, the Jews stood up in the temple and they said to him, well hast we said, because he said, I am going to be crucified. He said, if you be lifted, if the Son of Man be lifted up, which means be crucified, if I be lifted up, I will draw all things to myself. And they said, aha, you're going to commit suicide. You're going to commit, be crucified. Well have we said that thou art a Samaritan, and thou hast a devil. Well have we said that thou art a Samaritan, and thou hast a devil. And, Saint, and our Lord Jesus Christ responded, I have not a devil. But he did not say, I am not a Samaritan. Notice also that the Jews said, thou art a Samaritan. Oh, and, uh, and you also have a devil. Notice the devil came afterwards because they don't care about him having a devil, but they are very bothered by him being a Samaritan. And we must understand that one of the most defensive parts of being a Catholic, one of the most disturbing parts of being a follower of Jesus Christ, is that we who follow him, we who know, love, and serve him, 
are always going to be Samaritans. We're always going to be strangers to this world. This world is not our home. And it's never to be our home. We are on a journey to our real home that can never be taken from us. We're on a journey to heaven. And we're in this world as a Samaritan often is. The Chinese are good Samaritans. Why do the Chinese go everywhere in the world? To make money. And why else would you go? <laughs> so they go everywhere in the world to make profit and to bring back the profit. Everybody, everybody a Chinaman sees is a means to make cash. That's all you are to him. Customers. They go out in order all over the world, and they go all over the world to make money, to get treasures. And we're not that much different than the Chinese. The fact is that why are we here on this earth? We're supposed to travel as strangers looking for a way to make a profit. We're going to bring treasures with us into heaven. We're going to grow in the knowledge and love of God. We're going to build up merits so that when we get to death, we are going to be able to receive a great reward. St. John the almsgiver was once dealing with a man too attached to money. And he decided the way to defeat him was, you know, why are you doing such penance? Why do you do such great charity? He said, ah, I'm in it for the reward. And so the guy stayed with him. What's the reward? Ah, I'm in the reward. You've got to be patient. I'm in for the reward. And the greedy man stayed with him and stayed with him. And he finally explained to him, the reward is in heaven. And I'm in it for the reward. We must also remember that we followers of Jesus Christ, we are despised. We are cursed by the world. Many things are taken from us. Like the tenth station of Lord Jesus Christ on his journey to victory was stripped of his garments. All of his things were taken from him. And he had nothing when he went to his final battle. But when he finished the battle, what happened? On that day that he was stripped of his garments, on that day that he was nailed to the cross, and all his freedom was taken from him, and all his health was taken from him, and all his disciples were taken from him, what happened on that day? And he said what happened. He said, if you take away my garments, if you nail me to a wood, if you scourge me and crown me with thorns, if you kill me, I will draw all things to myself. He is a warrior, and how do we know who won the battle? Our Lord Jesus Christ himself said, To the warrior, to the victor, comes the spoils. And a man protects all the things that he has until someone stronger than he comes and takes it. And we must understand that we are strangers. And strangers come into the world, and Samaritans come into the world in order to conquer it. We come into the world in order to pick up treasures, in order to conquer souls for Christ, and to carry great treasures on our back and to our home. We will carry them to our home. That's what we're going to do. Carry them to our home. And hence, we are rightly called Samaritans. And also Augustine says, Samaritans have a strange tongue. Samaritans have a strange accent. Samaritans are recognized by their tongue and by what they say. You don't talk like us. And therefore, remember this, if you follow Christ, you must always be a Samaritan in your tongue. Do we speak like the world? Do we speak of the same things the world speaks of? Do we have the same loves, the same affections, the same interests, the same everything as the world? Is there no way to tell whether or not we are followers of Christ? Then we are not Samaritans, we are not strangers, and we are making this world our home. We are not supposed to make this world our home, but to go on this way to heaven. And also concerning the Samaritan, our Lord Jesus Christ gave him a duty, just like he gives us a duty. The Samaritan was told, you will go to Jericho. The man was on the way from Jerusalem to Jericho. He was fell amongst robbers. A priest was on his way from Jerusalem to Jericho. He saw the man, and he walked by. That was semi vivus that was barely alive. And the Levite walked by. Well, the Samaritan also had to go to Jericho. He had some business to do in Jericho. He was on his way to do that business. But what happens? He saw someone semi vivus. He saw someone half alive, wounded and dying on the side of the road, and he was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. So he was on his way to do what God told him to do. He was on his way to fulfill his duty. And on the way, he saw someone in need and someone suffering, someone who had not the knowledge of God, 
Someone who had not the love of God. Someone that fell amongst the robbers, which are the, 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 the devils that have dragged him down to sin. Someone that is in a great and terrible state physically, great and terrible state spiritually, great and terrible state in his mind, in his heart, in every way. He is semi-vivus, and his compassion, he felt he had compassion upon them. The Lord Jesus Christ looked up one day, and he had compassion upon the crowd, because they were hungry, and he fed them. He had compassion upon St. Mary Magdalene, who was weeping for her sins, and he forgave them. He had compassion upon the apostles. He had compassion upon his own. And it says there on the day of Holy Thursday night, he loved his own, and he loved them unto the end. The Samaritan, when he came to this world, he came to collect treasures. He came to this world to carry, uh, carry treasures back to his father. And he came to conquer a foreign land and bring it to the land of his, to the, to the, to the rule of his father. And he was able to do it because he remained always a Samaritan. And he remembered from whence he came and where he was going. And we are the followers of Christ must always be as Samaritan. We can never be anything else. And we must know this about being a Samaritan. Those who learn the ways of the Samaritan, they shall have an exciting life. They shall have interesting things happen. They shall have many adventures. They'll have tears and they'll have joys. But they'll have the tears and joys as reported, reported to in sacred scripture that the sorrows of the just man are many. But the sorrows of the fool are infinite. We shall have the sorrows of the just man, many, but not infinite. The fool suffers so much more. And so therefore, let's follow our master wherever he leads us. And also remember about our times. The very beginning of the gospel today. Many have desired to see the things you see, and they have not seen them. Many have desired to hear the things you hear, and they have not heard them. You know that there have been many saints down the last 2,000 years who wanted to be warriors of Christ in the most dire times, who wanted to be priests of God, not when there are thousands and thousands and thousands of priests, not when everybody is saying Mass in a cathedral and everything is comfortable, but they wanted to be soldiers in the great fight. They wanted to be soldiers in the time that all seems lost. A young man who is a real man, he wants to be a soldier in the battle. He doesn't want the war to end until after he gets a chance to fight. It's the most depressing thing for an 18-year-old. I am now I'm 18. I can finally fight, and the war ended. That stinks. He wants to be in the war. Don't let the war end until I'm out there whacking Germans. <laughs> they do not want to let the war end until they're out there fighting the bad guys. I don't want to be in the fight. This is one of the troubles of young men today. Harley Davidson is now losing all kinds of money. Mm. They're going bankrupt. You know why? Because boys, young men don't want to drive Harleys anymore because they don't like eating bugs. Mm. <laughs> Because they don't like loud engines. They can't hear their rock and roll very well. Because they don't like a rough ride. They're not men anymore. They can't even ride a Harley. <laughs> the fact is that what has happened to our world today, that even in the things of this world, man no longer wants to be tough. Man no longer wants to be a man. But a man who wants to be a man is going to be a warrior. He wants to be in the fight. And there were many saints... Many men of God the last 2,000 years who want to be there when the victory of Mary comes. We are now near her victory. This is the time to be a priest. This is the time to marry and have children. This is the time to live the gospel when the whole world hates the gospel. When they have abandoned the gospel and they want nothing to do with it, we can still have beautiful marriages. We can still have young men that are going to give themselves to God and be priests of God. We can still have sisters, we can still have nuns, we can still have monks and brothers, and we can still go out and bring the world to Christ. Those first monks, those first nuns, they ended up being persecuted and put to death. The first priest, St. Peter, he only said Mass in houses like this. He never ever said Mass in a church. And he was the Holy Father. He didn't want to be Pope in the time of glory. And this is the third, was the Pope in the greatest time of glory. He's not a saint. St. Peter was the Pope in the greatest time of sorrow, and he is a saint. And at the end of the world, Peter the Roman shall be the final Pope, and he also shall be a saint. And he shall have to run in exile, and he shall have to have many trials and tribulations, and he shall be bold against the Antichrist, and he shall have to hide, and he shall have to run. 
but he shall be a saint, and he shall have victory. The first St. Peter fought, and he had victory. The last St. Peter will fight, and he will have victory. And we who want to be the followers of Christ, why don't we want to be fighters? Samaritans are fighters. Samaritans are not at home in the world in which they are. Samaritans are often threatened and attacked. Well, as we said that thou art a Samaritan and thou hast a devil. They don't care about the devil. But they're afraid of the Samaritan. Well, let's ask the grace to be truly Samaritans to this world. Strangers to this world. And remember the flip side. If the Samaritan is a stranger, and he is not from this land, then who was that man on the side of the road? He was a stranger to the stranger. He was not in the family of the Samaritan. He was not a friend of the Samaritan. He was not. He was an enemy of the Samaritan or had nothing to do with Samaritans. He could not tolerate Samaritans. But he was wounded and lying dead. And his own priest saw him. And the priest walked by because he was busy. And his own Levite, his fellow Levite, saw him. And he walked by. And a stranger, despised by all his people, saw him. What do we, whom do we help? Our Lord Jesus Christ says this about our charity. We should not only help our friends and our family, for the pagans do this. What must we do? We must do good to our enemies. We must do good to those that hate us. We must go after and help those that are in the gravest of need. And that many of those in the gravest of need, they are not our friends. They are Samaritans to us. We are Samaritans to them, we are strangers to them, and they are strangers to us. And what does our Lord say? Why don't you stay here with us, said the women of, 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 the, of, of, the, uh, the, of the people, of the, the woman of the well, near Jacob's well. Said, no, I must go to many other places. There are many places where I must go. And, I, and what about the flock? Let us take care of our flock. No, there are other sheep that I must go to, and I must bring them into the sheepfold, that there may be one flock and one shepherd. So we are driven by an apostolic spirit, which is part of our church. And what drives us is that we are, by nature and by blood, Samaritans. So let us be Samaritans. Let us deny whoever says we are a devil. They are liars. But whoever says we are Samaritans, they speak the truth. And deny not that we are Samaritans and strangers to this strange land. But let us be Samaritans and try to be faithful ones, usque ad martyrdom, all the way until death, and to the greatest death of martyrdom if God allows them for us. Bless you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.